all, all the right, time. Let's do this. This meeting is being live streamed. Okay, first meeting called to order. Meeting adjourned. Good night. <laughs> meeting is over. And I'm muting you too because we have a new intro. Actually, no, first I'm going to be playing the new promo. And <laughs> we can't hear you, James. We can't hear you. Thank God. <laughs> the new promo done by our very blue Mavs. And here we go. Looking for some new podcasts to listen to? Well, look no further than the Ratsa Review Network. Ratsa Review is taking over the podcast world with plenty of shows to choose from within their network of entertaining programming, including the flagship show Ratsa Review with Wayne Noon, Greg Noggle, and Lou Mavs, as well as occasional co hosts Manny Mejias and James Lilquist. We also have the official Ratsa Review spin offs, such as Album vs. Album, Screams from the Grave, where we discuss beloved yet forgotten hard rock and metal albums of the past and a king diamond podcast called this broadcast belongs to them we've also got old man metals musings the right opinion with harrison bergeron beyond bushido a podcast dedicated to pro wrestling and mma with james elquist and eric adams no relation to the guy from manowar or the mayor of new york city the viera vault with ralph viera schmackle up to you too ralph the timo Toki podcast featuring stradivarius and avalon founding member timo Toki. the bs sessions with mark and jerry just the Cheese, Please, a podcast dedicated to cheesy films of the 1980s with Tara J and Adam. The Friday Night Party with the great Harry Barnett and Evie. And the Music is Life podcast with Lou Mavs. The Ratsaw Review Network is your go-to one-stop shop for the best podcasts out there today. Go to RatsawReview.com for more info. And to find out where you can find, follow, subscribe, and comment on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and all streaming platforms. The Ratsaw Review Network. We're, We're taking. taking over. Whoa, what's with the echo? Oh, uh, I, I got it on, on the other thing. <laughs> I'm, trying to figure how very to professional. I'm trying to figure out how to use this. All right. All right. Now we got to do our intro. How do I stop this? <laughs> Jane, stop this crazy thing. <laughs> Wayne, we heard you from the future. Turn off your speaker, for God's sake. <laughs> I did. I did. I was making sure it was working. It's All right, now, working it? just fine. All right. Now, here, here's our new intro done by our very good friend, Dusty Mahalan from the band uh, Frostbite, Frostbite BC. BC. Frostbite, not Biter. Frostbite BC. That's what I said. Frostbite BC. Bite and we're also metal ass. <laughs> with graphics by rocky baya i guess That's right yes rocky did all these graphics and uh the music is also by frostbite bc it's called frankenweed so you can go check that out on youtube so uh here's the video i hope you enjoy it All right. How do you how do you like the video? What video? There was a video. Are you gonna see the video? Oh no! Play it again. <laughs> <laughs> play it again. It's better than the content we will be bringing up. Oh my! It's, yeah, that's the best part of the whole show. You might as well just tune out now. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Yeah, all that, right, that was, good job, uh, guys. All right, good show. Uh, yeah, I mean, God, he did a really good job in that. And, and the graphics, too. I mean, Rocky does such awesome work. And he's he did that picture a long time ago. Just a little secret. Uh, you probably some people, if uh, you know, they're friends with us on uh, Facebook. Uh, they've seen the original picture and our old, our old co-host was in there and, and we kicked him out and we added Lou in there. He did a really good job of a Lou puppet. So. I really like that puppet move. Dude, I got a bigger underbite in that photo in, in, in the graphic <laughs> than I do in real life. <laughs> no, I don't know if you looked in the mirror. <laughs> I mean, I mean, Antonio Noki is uh, very jealous of that chin. Ah, uh, he does have a super chin. He does. he does. That's a lot of power that comes from that chin. But uh, yeah, I really appreciate uh, Dusty and Rocky and uh, Frostbite for letting us use the music and, and Dusty making that video and Rocky doing all the great work that he does on our show all the time with the logos and everything. So he's a yep. really good guy. And with that being cool. said, welcome to Ratsaw Review 2022. We're taking over. Oh, that's right. This is our first show of 20, uh, 2022. Right? There we go. Yes. 
Happy New Year, by the way. Happy. Happy. I hope hopefully you guys had a good new year. I had to work the day the next day, so Oh you did. I, yeah. Uh, yeah, I had to go to bed early. I was an old man. Oh, that sucks for you. Well, no, it isn't. What, what was I gonna miss? Getting drunk and, and, <laughs> and meeting random strangers with, with a virus going on? Yeah. Yeah, just having a day off, you know. We got um, lucky, uh, you know, because it fell on the hot on that weekend. So we get the uh you know, the day of and the day before. So it worked out for me. Well, Merry New Year to you guys, too. And unfortunately, we were home sick with Omicron. So uh, you what just can't I tell you about eating those poplars again. You know, <laughs> damn it. You can't win, man. You've just been sick with one thing after the other. You know, you know, one of these days, you know, you'll stop like, you know, running around in, in medical waste and getting like all these crazy, you know, medical diseases, you know, it'll be like the toxic Avenger. I- <laughs> which by the way i will be covering that movie on just the cheese please with tara j and adam so i'm looking forward to that oh, really cool. nice segue thank you james oh hey you know that's what i could do yeah he wasn't prepared for that anyway um <laughs> no hey, hey look uh yeah it it's funny last year when i joined rat side review officially i'd gotten over covid around uh between thanksgiving and christmas and now i'm over omicron um yeah i seem to be velcro for viruses you know but i am over coxsackie virus finally yay oh no rest in in peace the butler gloves yes rest in peace the butler gloves (laughs) we will remember you (laughs) my michael jackson impersonation uh (laughs) career failed anyways (laughs) Uh, so what was when when you got the first virus though you weren't vaccinated right the vaccine wasn't out yet yeah, so so uh, you had obviously you had the vaccine now. So which how do you think this this last virus was compared to the first one that you had? Uh, it went in and out like, uh, I don't know, like the uncle you throw out that gets too drunk, I guess, at family parties and say, no, you got to go. So it was quick <laughs> in and out. So, you know, it wasn't lingering yeah, and it wasn't that. worse than um, uh, a slight fever and uh, stuffy nose. Throw throw it out 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 out. Who's making popcorn? Yeah, that would be <laughs> so that, that'd be that'd be that'd be the man in the sideways view there. Uh, yeah, why are you sideways? It's to fit with the new theme of the new year. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's going sideways. Perfect. No, this is this is this is going par with the course of Rat Solid Review. Yeah. <laughs> happy New Year, Greg. Good to see you. Hey, Bye. Happy New Year, oh, Happy hurting. New Year. Um, but yeah, no, it was uh, it was nothing. It was uh, it was okay. Yeah, there he goes. So, you know, I mean, well, no, I, I have to have it. Oh, sorry. Bro. Hey, you're no sideways. There you go. Oh, yeah, I, there I know you go. I'm sideways, mm-hmm. but oh, I, I have to have the phone sitting like that. And well, no, you're but you're actually sideways on the show. I I understand <laughs> that, but I don't know how <laughs> to fix it. Uh, you, you jump out and then you restart in pro in uh, profile. Actually, if you could um, maybe sit on the floor. You'd be all right. Yeah, if you lay on the couch or, <laughs> sideways, or the bed, if you lay you know, sideways. sideways, then you'd yeah, be you'll perfectly look, fine. Yeah, do it for a Reynolds style. You'd be fine. <laughs> nah, better I than the hassle hop. I'm like a bastard after about thirty minutes. <laughs> um, but uh, to, answer, to answer your question though, Wayne, yeah, I mean, like you know, got the got the jab, no booster, um, and I still have antibodies, so. But even uh, other family members of mine that uh, don't have the jab, I'm not going to say who for the fear of incriminating them, James. So don't ask. Anyway, <laughs> I'm, I'm messing. I'm messing. What I do, what I do. I, I love you. Anyway, uh, but, uh, you know, even they didn't get hitly as uh, hitly as bad, badly as. <laughs> wow. Hit. OK, so so side effect of the virus. Is- no, <laughs> I think it was the Frost by BC song that basically made me feel high as fuck right now. <laughs> but no, it was. Uh, hey, Manny. Hey, how you doing, <laughs> guys? Radio, buddy. Hey, um, so, yeah, no, we're OK. We're OK. So, you know, it's nothing worse than the cold people. So take it easy. Get plenty of NyQuil, DayQuil, Tylenol methamphetamines, whatever helps you get through the day. I'm... Whoa, 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 whoa. If hey, Lemmy did speed. He said, if you're going to do drugs, do speed. That's what Lemmy said. Okay. Well, <laughs> Lemmy is God, so. All right, good. That's right. <laughs> well, that's good to hear. I'm glad everybody's doing okay. And yes. uh, and I got full-time employment today. Woohoo! Yes, and congratulations. congratulations yeah. Thank you. So, fuck you to my ex-employer that laid me off. I'm not saying that's who right. is Spectral UV, Tony Allen, the CEO. Fuck you. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, how you really feel about so- <laughs> Well, put it to you this way. He made me want to hate Scotland, but then I watched Braveheart again. So uh, you're all right with me, Scotland. Oh, uh, well, unfortunately, we got the piece watched, of shit. You, sh- you should have watched Highlander. It's a much better Scottish film. But is it a Scottish hey guys, film? Hey, guys, Greg? He's here. There he is. Everybody's is, here. But is okay. Highlander a Scottish film? Considering Christopher Lambert is French. But 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 he but he's but he's playing a Highlander and and the his it, the sidekick is Sir Ramirez. Sean Connery who is Scottish. So right, the French guy plays a, a Scottish guy who has a bad accent, and the, the Scottish guy plays a Spanish guy. With no, a, he is not Spanish, sir. He's Egyptian. Ramirez. No, let's not waste time on this. Uh, Ramirez is very Spanish. <laughs> but he remember he says he's Egyptian. What a lay, James. Come on. Anyway, I mean, I mean, I understand it's Moscow Bron, but come on. <laughs> Mexican Americans don't like to get up early, but oh, there you are, dude. So yeah. they do it real slow. He's here. It's, but it's he's a sideways. protest song, man. It's it. a protest song. Uh, as as always, I can't go without an episode of talking about Halloween, and I got the Halloween comic book. Of course, you did. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Seekers of the Seven Keys. I haven't read it yet, but it looks pretty cool. Some really cool Who artwork it? in there. Who's the uh, uh, publisher? Opus. I never know. read of those bastards, but uh, me neither. That looks pretty badass. Though. I like but, the, uh, the hologram and everything. Yeah, it looks- it's a really nice looking cover and everything. So a lot of cool drawings in there. I don't know what the hell it's about. I, who knows? Well, you, did you see that? Uh, it's all these graphic novels. I think we talked about it. Dio's got one. King Diamond. The Doors. Yeah. It's really. Uh, I don't know. I can't remember it's who else was coming hand. out with one. What's that? What? It's out of hand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah it, it started like Anthrax had one a while. They oh, like that's the first coming ones, out. Though. Anthrax. Thank yeah. you. That's who yeah, I that, can think of. It. Yeah, that one's yeah. been out for a while, I think. But uh, yeah, all these bands, I don't, you, you know what? They're just, there's not too many consoles going around. So what else are they going to do? I mean, so many bands are doing wine and that got kind of old. Now they got to do the comic books. So Anthrax, hey, I could kind of see. I can kind of see Anthrax because a lot of their older songs are written from comic books, so that kind of works. Well, and they're, and they're massive nerds, and they're well, massive I, nerds. My favorite band of all time is Adores, but do they did do they really need the income? I mean, they haven't had the no. work since 1971, so yeah. no, I yeah. think they're all right. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> I don't think they're I, I, I think either. they're doing okay. Exactly. Yeah. I, don't think they, I don't think that comeback's coming unless the second yeah. coming rolls around. Yeah. <laughs> well, they did attempt to come back with Ian Asbury of the cult at one point, right? Yeah, we're not going to talk about that. Oh, never mind then. Okay, <laughs> moving right along. But what we will talk about, uh, yeah. some actually, that's been really fairly big news uh, lately. Judas yeah. Priest deciding to go on tour as a quartet. How's that going to work? I have no idea because they've been a, a double, a, a dual guitar, you know, right. guitar band since the beginning. So how are I they going to shenanigans? Are they going to play backing tracks? You know, that's just, I don't know. That's weird. No, I mean, but uh, who's going to cover the, the, I mean, there's two co-lead guitarists the whole time. I mean. Right. Yeah. How are you going to do the harmonies? That's what I'm saying. They're going to do backing tracks, but then, then they really got to be in sync and in time with it. You know, I'm sure they time the shows out or whatever, but I don't know. I just don't. Imagine free will burning with one guitar. It'd be a fucking catastrophe. That's that's my point. How's that going to work? Oh. Uh, very interested to see how that's going to play out. Well, how would, only how would you have only have? two guys left? There's Rob and Ian, Ian Hill. I mean, isn't it basically Halford? Well, if you think about it, Ian's been the only mainstay since the beginning. You yeah, know, that's don't forget, it. Rob Halford was out of the band at 12 uh, for 12 years. So yeah, was, we don't know right. if he's we don't know if he's contracted or if he is a partner in uh, Judas Priest Holdings. I'm but, pretty sure he's uh, a partner. It just, yeah, I would imagine so. Yeah, I mean, I would would, you wouldn't so. come back for anything less, you know. I mean, I don't know. Ask David Lee Roth. I think he was contracted. Yeah, uh, but it, yeah, but it, it, as much fun as David was having, and as positively as he spoke about it, Rob is very, very invested and passionate in Judas Priest. I have a hard time believing he would do what he does if he wasn't some kind of partner, even if he's not co-owner maybe yeah yeah i I have to agree i'm pretty sure he's uh it's like the black sabbath thing when i only agree with the original lineup he basically gave up the rights to the name to not totally he still co-owns it but now he co-owns it with ozzy 50 percent each yeah Mm. yeah so uh, that probably explains why those tony martin albums haven't been reissued or maybe there's no demand for him i don't know 
you know, that's you know, more because of the label they were on at the time. Oh, IRS, IRS I know or whatever. Yeah. I notice a lot of albums that were on that label. They have a real hard time reissuing, at I least in the U S I guess. I mean, doesn't own the masters for that. No, probably. No, I don't think so. Probably yeah. has the master well, recordings, but it's the publishing rights that yeah. probably have to get rearranged. Cause when you sign with an independent label, they own part of the publishing. The only band I know who owns their stuff from IRS records is REM. And that's oh. why their old material is available on streaming platforms. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, well, at that time, Black, I mean, we're getting off topic, but Black Sabbath, I guess, in the States were the low end of their career. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yep. internationally, though, they didn't do too badly. But in the States, I mean, you people were surprised whenever they put out a new album, you told them about it. I mean, they were very badly promoted, to say the least. But there oh, was no promotion. <laughs> well, yeah. Put it. But as far yeah, as I, the I, Judas, I, sorry, Manny, go ahead. No, go ahead. You go with the priest. No, as far as the Judas Priest thing is concerned, I mean, the biggest question everyone has is why don't they just ask KK Downey to come back? Um, listen, people, not to burst your bubble, that ship sailed a long time ago. Um, that ain't going to happen. From the day that he gave in his resignation, to the day priest was like yeah he's never coming back i mean practically those are the words that came out of his mouth it's not gonna happen so just deal with it i mean welcome there, to there the main to be, stage with judas priest it just it seems <laughs> to be some deep-rooted scars that will never be healed between ken and rob i don't get it i thought it was between ken and um and glenn tipton i mean the book he just complains about tipton the whole time if you read oh, uh, was that a fact oh. yeah have you read kk's book I haven't had a chance to read it. If you get a chance, pick it up. It's a good read. It's a good read. I don't know if you guys have read it or not. But problem is, I'm just I already know it's going to be it feels like a smear book right before I even read it. And I just I don't. Well, it's more like a whiny memoir than a smear. You know? well, <laughs> cool. Even though so the, those. So, so it's the grapes of wrath. Got it. <laughs> I mean, like I like Paul Diano's book, The Beast, because he admits he owns his screw ups in life. Not He doesn't blame Steve Harris yeah. or Bruce Dickinson for them. So that was a great book. I didn't even know he wrote a book. So there you go. Well, we don't know if he wrote really it or not. We don't know if any of it is factual. <laughs> Could he have rambled and someone put it to paper? Yes. I mean, at one point, Paul Diano told everyone he was a practitioner of Islam. <laughs> Meanwhile, he has a yes. tattoo on the back of his neck that says God equals sucker. It's like, come on. <laughs> one of the first rock memoirs was by time, Alice. One of the first rock memoirs was by Alice Cooper called Me Alice. I've never seen it, never held it. But wow, years wow. later, it was written like in 78, right after he got out of the first time in rehab. And he admitted he just made stuff up. He didn't remember what he wrote. You know, actually, he didn't really write it. He just said, talked into Mike and somebody wrote it, you know, but he just basically said he just made stuff up. He doesn't remember any of it. The only, guy who gets a, the only guy who gets a pass for writing a book of about the 80s is Glenn Hughes, because as he says in every interview, he does not remember the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> Too funny. Uh, the other bit of news is Wasp will embark on their first tour in a decade this fall. The trek will con uh, coincide with the band's 40th anniversary and it includes support from Armit Saint and Michael Schenker. Yep. Well, I, Michael Schenker in only five cities. Only five. Well, I just read the first headline here. So, but now, the, is, that, now is that going to be the the? Are they actually going to go tour tour? Or are they doing the classic going to casinos and doing the? Well, no, tour? they're actually going on their first U.S. tour in yeah. Yeah. twenty years at this point. Is there a demand? I like Lost, but is there a demand for a tour from them? I mean, guys, any of you? You'd have to ask Greg. He's rocking the team. No, I mean, he's uh, Greg's got the shirt on. <laughs> yeah, Greg. <laughs> if you look at sideways, I mean, yeah, Greg, um, I'll throw it to you. I mean, they, they still sound good. I've been watching the videos and stuff that have been uh, coming out. Blackie's clearly older and doesn't really sing like he used to, but mm. I'm looking forward to it. I think it'll be a fun show. Yeah, yeah they're coming here too uh, uh, on the 22nd. The Paramount in Huntington, yeah, yeah. So uh, I don't know. I it might. Try to go to that. I actually, if for anything, I'd like to go see Armored Saint. Saint. Armored yeah. Saint here, Saint yeah. here, Saint yeah. here. I, I saw Armored I Saint in Brooklyn at Lemoore back in 2000. They were amazing. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I love John Bush. So to see him live, uh, I don't think, no, I never got to see him with Anthrax. When I yeah, saw I Anthrax, Joey's back in the band. So it'd be cool to see Armored Saint. Uh, yeah. That'd be awesome. 
I had a chance to when he was in Anthrax, but uh, Stomp Four Four Two really pissed me off initially. So <laughs> I waited till Joey came back. So I yeah. saw him with John Bush. And they were they were damn good actually. Um, I can't remember what they played. I think most of the stuff it was off the uh, Sound of White Noise tour is when I saw him. Oh cool! Oh wow, that would have been a good time to see him. I love that album, and I like Stomp Forty Two. Uh, Four uh, Forty Two. I didn't like I it when it too, first actually. came out, but it grew on me over time. Actually, all those John Bush albums, not including Sound of White Noise, have all grown on me. When they first came out, I I had mixed feelings about them, and then they just grew on me over time. So yeah. I'm with you on that. I even yeah. enjoyed We Come for You All. I just wasn't crazy about the Anthrax pentagram look because I'm like, okay, now you're doing the pentagram thing. <laughs> hey, come on it's a little late now but i thought it was cool that i incorporated the a into the logo i actually have one of those shirts the, ki- the kids love it yep. <laughs> merchandising, merchandising. the kids love it <laughs> uh, uh and jethro tull uh releases video for the title track of their first album in over 18 years is it the zealot gene any any uh jethro tull fans i am i'm one i'm one i am but voivod just put out a new song too so the hell with oh really i didn't see anything about boy when did they put it out um last week yeah dan post oh. oh maybe you're not uh friends on facebook with dan in a way still no. i am no nope. um so- shit well i can't i can't i can't look at it now because i'm on my phone <laughs> but um go to voivod's page and check it out because it's pretty awesome and um I believe it's the opening track of the new record, and some of it builds off some themes from the last song on The Wake. Mm, cool. Cool. Okay, that's interesting. That's uh, called uh, Planet Eaters. Thank you. <laughs> when does that album come out? Oh. I, uh, again, I would have no to. Idea. Look, look but but I don't believe there's a set release date. Oh, yet. wait, wait. Uh, the, uh, excuse me. Synchro Anarchy Out Worldwide, February 11th. Cool. Oh, Thank you. Thank you. Free media records. I can yeah. Google. That's about that's about the extent that's of why you're here. Excellent. That's, we that's need why a I'm here. Guy. Yeah. James, the resident <laughs> fact checker of Ratside Review. Uh, Thank you, sir. I am the Jamie of, of Ratside Review. Got it. Thank you. RSR intern. Well, fetching a wing boy. Gunga Din. Oh, oh, pool boy. Dasan. <laughs> well, uh, tonight we will be joined by Matt Barlow from uh, Ashes of Aries uh, very soon, I would hope. Um, so, you know, I just yep. figured we'd come on here and just talk because we had like this is our first show of the the new year, so we haven't really seen each other, or really talked. We took, to each we took other some time point. off, you know. Uh, everybody, you know, I I know I had to take a sabbatical for December, but uh, everybody yeah, we missed had, you the whole month, man. Yeah, I know. Oh, well, actually. So I did do one show this this last month, and it was for Lou, and we yeah. had a ball doing incoherent ramblings uh, uh, brought to you by me and Lou trying to keep me on, on the straight and narrow path, which failed miserably, unfortunately. Five times, people. Five times I had to bring him back. <laughs> Talk, but yes, it was... We talked about the, the greatest, one of the greatest Christmas movies of all time, Emmett Otter's Jug Bank Christmas. Uh, it's I watched that thing because of you, you guys. didn't like it. And I didn't really like it. Neither did my you son. You don't like you don't like art, sir. You just don't. I do like, like art. It. No, I you do don't. Like look, I do too. Look, I just bought it. You like right Halloween. You like Halloween art. art. You like metal art, sir. Wayne's idea like the... of a good puppet movie is Meet the Feebles. <laughs> <laughs> That's too that much movie. credit. I would think more Hobgoblins, the great. Oh, oh, oh wow. which was too there cheap to even be a Roger Corman movie. Bet oh, you there's man. a Bon Jovi CD in that rack back there, isn't there? You no, there is not. <laughs> oh, there's, bon definitely, there's definitely there's <laughs> oh, definitely something wet is definitely. Right, you make me there. feel bad. I have Bon Jovi CDs somewhere in here. So, <laughs> well, <laughs> what's wrong with Bon Jovi? What's what's wrong with Jersey there? You know? Oh God, because they got shoved down my throat so much, and I find them kind of annoying. But honestly, as far as it's written musically, I think they do a pretty fucking good job to sell it's... records. I just don't want to listen to the shit, except for Never Say Goodbye, which I'm pretty sure they play when they're waterboarding. Oh, I'm sure they do. But, well, it, no it's, pretty, it's pretty vanilla. Ben is pretty <laughs> no, vanilla. No, no you know. comment in that situation. You could, may or may you, not could enter, you could, you could enter, you could enter, change that. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry, James. 
but uh, you could interchange that song with uh, "High Enough" by Damn Yankees, and no one would ever be Ooh. able to tell. They're just <laughs> no one wants so to talk about that anymore, song. Greg. Nobody wants to talk about that. He anymore. didn't say no, Ted Nugent specifically. He said "Damn Yankees," and we are being joined by our special guest. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, Holy what's crap, up, Matt Barlow's in the house. Welcome, Matt. Oh, Matt. Matt Barlow is here. Thank you for Ashes joining us. Oh, there yeah. we go. And we are live on YouTube, Matt. Got a full, got a full crew. I see. Yes. Yeah. We. Yes. I can't. It, and we need more a lot of people to interview one person. That's the kind of show. Well, we, we have are. more credibility than a Motley <laughs> crew, so it's all good. There you go. Uh, but uh, welcome to Rat Salary Review. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me on, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. And uh, actually, we got uh, somebody in the chat here, uh, Harold Burton. Greetings from Ohio. Greetings, Harold. Welcome to Rat Salary Review. And uh, we are joined by Matt Barlow from Ashes of Aries, and uh, you have a new album out. And uh, I've been listening to it for the last few days now, and uh, it's really, really good. It's called Emperors of Emperors and Fools, and it's out by uh, Rock of Angels Records. Um, how did you get involved with uh, Rock of Angels Records? Because I know I think you were on um, oh, you were on another label at one point too, right? Uh, Nuclear, Nuclear Blast. Blast. Yeah, we started out with Nuclear Blast. Yeah. And how then, did you get onto Rock of Angels? Well, we were on we were on Nuclear Blast, and when it came time for them to take their second option for the or an option for the second record they they declined so oh really so then we were, you know look basically looking for a record label and uh just so happened that uh roar reached out to us and we're happy that they did because it was uh it was nice that uh you know we had some had some support it's nice to be on a uh on a, on a greek label um mm. a lot of have a lot of greek friends and fans and my people uh, <laughs> oh. So um, yeah, it worked out worked out really well for us, man. And they've been uh, they've been great partners. Yeah, really good, good. Uh, and is there a meaning behind the uh, album title "Emperors and Fools"? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the 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 song, and I actually started writing the lyrics to the song years and years ago. Um, I was actually inspired by the uh, the 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 film version of the Count of Mon- the Count of Monte Cristo. Oh. Um, I don't know if you've seen that. Jim Caviezel was in that. Um, but uh, great, great movie, uh, great, uh, great revenge and yet redemption movie uh, and story. The original story um, is, uh, of course, Moss uh, wrote it years and years ago. Anyway, uh, the, the general idea of it, uh, there's a, a guy named whose name is Dantes and he's not he's 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 not a, a bright guy, but a, certainly a great guy. Right. Um, to, to begin with. But uh, he is uh, <clears throat> he happens upon the Isle of, of uh, Elba where Napoleon is being held captive uh, because, you know, he's Napoleon and he needs needed to be held captive. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so he happened upon this, upon this because um, uh, he was a, uh, a sailor and his captain was dying. Um, so when he, when he came to the Island, um, Napoleon approached him and asked him to uh, pass off, pass on, along a, a note uh, to a, a dear friend of his, um, but what he was actually doing was passing on the, the, basically the plan of, Hey, I'm coming back and, and basically the, you know, the, uh, the hundred days that the legendary hundred days of, of Napoleon of his last, his, his last, uh, hurrah. Um, he, of course he didn't, um, um, uh, shoot. Uh, now I'm uh, Dantes, sorry, forgot his name. Dantes of course, didn't know this at the time. However, you know, that, that it is what it is. And so, uh, Napoleon had said to one of his, after he had handed off the, the note to Dantes to take to his, his, uh, basically one of his, his guys that was going to help him, uh, start the revolution again. Um, he's Napoleon says to one of his subordinates, uh, you know, uh, you know, we're all just, uh, Kings and pawns, emperors and fools, you know, obviously okay. being the emperor, Dantes being the fool. Um, so, you know, with that, and we kind of took a play on that with the, uh, with the album cover as well. Um, mm. The, the kings and the pawns uh, for the for the for the visual and then the emperors and fools for the title. Yeah, um, so, yeah it was just kind of one of those one of those things that just one of those lines that really struck me as very important. Um, and and it, you know you sort of tend to see flashes of that throughout history. You know as, yeah. as time goes on and it's yeah. sort of sort of telling. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's a cool. I love the album title. It's really cool. 
And uh, a lot of really good songs on it too. I mean, I pretty much like the whole album, but uh, some standout tracks. I Am the Night, the, the first song, and uh, probably one of my favorites, uh, Primed. I love mm-hmm. that song a lot. I love that intro and then that whole thing after the intro happens. I'm just That's a really good song. Cool. And then the Emperors and Fools, uh, By My Blade is really cool. And I think that's the first single, right, that you released? Yep, yep. And you released a video for that? Yeah, um, yeah. We did that, you know, sort of intentionally. We the the last the, for the last record, the first song that everybody got to hear, though I think is a brilliant song. It was sort of a slower pace, you know, more of a uh, it was kind of a well a, a pseudo ballad, I guess you would say. Um, but it was a little bit slower pace, and some people were like, "Going, why in the hell would they release this as their first track and all this other stuff?" <laughs> I wanted to make sure that you know the release on this one the first release that was like a kind of a punch in the face kind of a kind of a track so uh, yeah, I, definitely that works out. made it for me so i i thought that was the one yeah definitely and uh what tomorrow will bring uh gone and the last track on the album monsters lament and you got tim owens mm-hmm. on there yep. as well yep. now um how'd that come to be because obviously you both are from a former iced earth vocalist so right uh and you've done already uh, two previous uh, Ashes of Aries albums and uh, what had it become to do something with Tim now not earlier well, on well actually and that's the, the funny thing is because we, we'd actually talked about doing it uh, it's a song that that song has actually been in the works for since the last record okay. um, you know so Freddie had actually had had written that and kind of had it and wanted to do it then it just didn't work out for us with with Tim's schedule with with what we had already for the for that record we just had a lot of material and, uh, and we just thought it was, was okay. If we, if we waited and held off on it. So Mm -hmm. we did. And, uh, and it worked out really well for us. I think, uh, certainly for us doing the record and for, you know, for Tim being able to do it, obviously down, you know, with everything COVID and all that stuff and all the touring being down and all that, you know, musicians had had time to do other stuff. And that was, that was one. We're happy to, you know, that he was able to do that uh, with us. And uh, and we also have some other musicians uh, guesting on the record as well. Um, some, you know, somewhat the same, the same thing. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> we love having them on, on the record and we were happy to, you know, give people some financial support in this uh, kind of tough time as well. So right. uh, uh, yeah, it, it, it's it just, it, you know, because of the, because of the, the way that they, the the record was the the last record and and this is an 11 minute song you know mm-hmm. so it's a huge beefy song so um you'll notice on on this record we have some songs that are a bit shorter even than than stuff that we've had in the past so it just it just worked out i think structurally for the song or for the record it was great and sometimes that's what you have to think about in the big picture of things how a record is going to flow and how songs right. all kind of support each other in creating a, a record so we we're we do we are sort of conscious about that kind of stuff when we're when we're laying out stuff and picking songs um not only that just i mean even even the way that the songs are laid out and even the way that um <clears throat> you know the instruments that are that are used um in the songs and the you know the direction that the, the songs the song sound so um we we try to think about that we we try to you know whenever we're sculpting a sound it's not for the record it's not just the song you know we're trying to think of like how the songs you know might blend with one another and things like that and so uh monsters monsters lament i think is the cherry on top of this this record and uh you know it worked out perfectly yeah yeah it's definitely an awesome song and you mentioned the, the, yeah it is and you mentioned the uh, guest musicians and one thing i wanted to ask about um i'm a huge van williams fan i was a huge nevermore fan uh, mm-hmm. one of my fa- one of my favorite drummers and yeah. um yeah, he was part of the band originally, right on the first album. But then it looks like now he's became a guest musician. How did, what happened with that? Well, it just you know um, a couple things. Um, his his schedule. Um, his his wife was was sick prior to the in between the first and the, and the second album. She was very very ill, and she mm. passed away. So oh, his really, priorities. Yeah. Had, you know, had had yeah, his, they they had shifted, and uh, and and so basically that's that's where it's at you know he couldn't be a full-time contributor um but we're happy really happy that he was able to do these records we're happy again to you know help him out financially as mm-hmm. well doing that um because you know like these records like freddie and i don't get paid <laughs> <laughs> we do this stuff so everything everything goes everything you know everything that we're given by the label goes into the the, the music so right. um we don't take money for it because we have other other jobs. So, right. um, 
so it, it just worked, it, you know, it just worked out that way. And, you know, we're, we're happy to have Van on, on both those. He wasn't able to do the, uh, <clears throat> the, the, uh, the EP that we did last year. He wasn't able to do that because scheduling didn't what, you know, wasn't working out for him and mm-hmm. things like that. Um, so we had another drummer, uh, do that record, but you know, it was, it was, it's still cool. when we, you know, we were great, you know, really grateful to have him back on this one, but, yeah. uh, yeah. yeah, good. Uh, I'll let somebody else start talking because uh, I don't want to take up everybody's time here. All right, I'll, I'll ask a couple of questions first. Um, first of all, congratulations on the release of the new, new album. I absolutely love it. Um, what I like about it is that it's a continuation of what you did with Ice Earth in the past, but it's more dynamic and more um, upward and progressive in its in its um, in its recording and writing. And I absolutely loved it. Uh, what I want to ask was, would you say that you're still as influenced by what you were back in the day? Or is there anyone out there right now that you would say is inspiring you to, you know, uh, to, uh, to write uh, for the band, what you do? No, well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I'm in, I am inspired by the music scene right now. I can't really say that I'm inspired. I'm not like inspired by other musicians. I mean, I'm, I'm an old guy, man. I listen to like, I still listen to the stuff that I listened to when I was growing up. You know what I mean? I don't mm-hmm. listen to a lot of, a lot of newer music and that's probably, you know, bad on me, but, but then again, I, I don't want to get into that, <clears throat> that thing. And I, how, how, how can I say this in a, in a uh, diplomatic way? So some of the, some of the bands that, that I listened to when I was younger and like, you know, and I know, and I understand people have to evolve and change, but I think it should be a natural evolution for the band, not outside influences. But I noticed that there were some bands that I listened to in the eighties that <clears throat> evolved because they were maybe influenced by outside music at that time in through the nineties and the two thousands and things like that. I never, I never want to be that really. I don't want to necessarily be influenced by, whatever scenes going on outside of that i sort of want to maybe be fresh because i'm just rethinking the stuff that i am happy about you know the the things that make me happy i do listen to other kinds of music but i don't know that i'm like influenced by other bands in the scene right now you know i don't know does that make sense yeah absolutely I'm, i'm i don't maybe I'm in, I'm intentionally not doing that. I do love other bands, but I really try not when I'm, when I'm kind of going back, I'm, I'm not necessarily thinking of those other bands or I'm not saying, Hey, we need to sound like this or we need right. to sound like or do this because, you know, <clears throat> I don't, I don't want to necessarily, you know, end up in that whole thing. Like where some of the older bands that were following like the new metal sound or, or whatever that was, I just want to do what I like, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think, Freddie's the same way. We're sort of like-minded where that's concerned. We know what we like. We know what drum sounds we like. We know what guitar tones we like. We know what, you know, what, how, you know, how something is delivered. Um, and, uh, and I, I, you know, I, I just know like how I like to um, project myself as far as a, a vocal is concerned. Um, and so therefore I'm not trying to, and, and, you know, maybe I wouldn't be influenced by those things. And I'm not saying that but I, I just I don't think that I I don't think that I am. I don't think that I'm listening like I'm influenced by by newer music, but I I certainly am inspired by the scene. I love the fact that there are so many great bands that are that are coming out, young bands, especially especially the younger bands that I feel are are embracing the the, um, you know, the power metal vibe um, that and the, and the you know, the the true the quote, the quote true metal vibe. Of, right. of my of my era you know uh, what i consider my era and that's really inspiring to me so I, I i do appreciate that um but uh and and i and i there's a tremendous amount of talent out there and and quite frankly i'm i'm a little bit envious i guess of, of a lot of the younger bands because and we i've had this conversation before like we're like we're waiting in the we're waiting on uh, getting into a studio so we can mix and master and some bands are doing it by themselves at their in their home studios you know because they can because they've got right. that because they because i've got that back that background and that and i'm an old school guy man i remember task cam you know tracking <laughs> task cam you know so that sort of shows where where i'm at i don't do that <laughs> what i'm saying is my uh 
my digital recording ability is very, very limited. It's basically limited to, hey, I can see my voice on this track as I'm doing it. You know, I can see that and I can record that. And I, and I know this is a WAV file. And I know if I send it to Freddie, he'll know what the hell to do with it. You know, so <laughs> that's, uh, that's, that's basically where, where my uh, recording abilities end. So. Yeah. Well, like I said, I mean, it's definitely a uh, move forward from what you've done. By the way, I love the Batman mug. Uh, it's a move oh, forward man. from the uh, for, from what you've done in the past, you know, just going upward. I mean, the music sounds incredible. Aside from the, doing uh, podcast interviews um, after this cycle of promotion ends, what do you what would you say would be the next logical step for Ashes of Aries? Is there any plan to do any possible festivals or maybe any touring if COVID regulations let up? Yeah, I mean, that would be that would be great, man. I mean, obviously, that's what what every band wants to wants to be able to do, um, you know, especially festivals and things like that, where you can, you know, expose yourself to a larger group of people and uh, and have them have them see you. Um, that's those are all those are all great ideas. But, yeah, right now it's 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 really so up in the air, man, because I know that there are already people canceling stuff for the summer. And, you know, just because there's that question whether or not uh, whether or not this this thing's going to continue on um and for freddie and i it's a little bit more difficult because we have careers that we have to you know make sure that we have time off so we really have to plan stuff out well in advance um we can't just go okay yeah sounds good next month we'll pack up and and do a tour we can't really do that so um it has to be a little more planned out for us and and right now it's a little bit sketchy you know unfortunately um so we will see that man if something opens up and, and we can we can do some promotion some touring that doing that way it would be fantastic yeah. first time i saw you in concert was uh 2002 at wwe the world in times square nice. the uh, horror show tour and uh i have to say um all right this isn't a question but i gotta put this guy's vocals ability over he did not miss a freaking notes spot on at two and a half hours set so buy his record when it comes out ashes of aries coming out soon so just wanted to put that out there thanks matt go ahead yeah i appreciate well and that's that's the thing man i think that that was uh so i i think man i'm trying now i'm scratching my head to, to remember but i think we did the european tour first and that was a three hour that was a three hour set we were doing because we we actually did that that european tour and here's the here's the brilliance and we'll keep going back to century media or yeah was it century that was that we were yeah yeah they didn't want to record they didn't want to do the recording of that of that tour and it was unfortunate because we did we did three full sets so we did like a like a, a and we did set changes in between each one so we did the, like the first the first three records and then and then the or the yeah we did the first three records in the first hour then like dark saga something wicked in the second one and 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 then we did horror show was the full third hour set. So, I mean, so that was probably coming off of that tour, which was like, you know, so doing a, yeah, doing a two hour set or whatever for the U S would have been like cake compared to doing that, man, that was, <laughs> that, those were, that was just brutal. I mean, we were doing, cause we didn't, we didn't have an opener or anything. We were our own opener. So it was, uh, it was like a, a big, a big deal, big production. Yeah, definitely. Wow. Next round of questions, guys, go ahead. Well, actually, I had, a, I had one question because you kept talking about uh, your career outside of music. Do you believe that, that that you stepping away from music and everything helped you rekindle your love for it? Because I bet there was a time of when you were getting kind of burnt out, you know, from touring and doing everything. And then uh, you decided to take a break from that. Did that really rekindle what you wanted to do musically while working? Well, yeah, not not necessarily, man. It, it, it that's the thing. It's, uh, it's weird. I, you know, it's funny cause I, I never really got burnt out from touring. Um, cause we didn't really tour enough when I, when I was, when I was in, in iced earth first, we didn't tour a lot, you know, uh, because it was, it was the, the band made, made money off of, off of the, uh, off of the, the records and stuff like that. So it wasn't a touring was not the big push at that point, you know, uh, but when I left, you know, I left, I left the band because I was, you know, I was in my thirties and I'm going, I'm looking at it and going, eh, I wasn't making great money uh, for sure. I, and I was working other jobs and stuff like that outside of the band. Um, and I, I wish we would have toured more back then, you know, we probably would have been a lot better off. I mean, I would have been probably better off financially, but 
Um, but I, you know, after nine 11, I sort of started looking at my life differently. Um, uh, well, you know, my wife and I would have, have been thinking about family and, and, you know, starting a family and stuff. And it just wasn't going to be, you know, uh, we weren't going to be in a great spot, uh, as far as that's concerned. And I wanted to do something a little bit more. I, I felt more, you know, contributing to society and everything else. And so I, I was looking at law enforcement <clears throat> and, uh, taking online classes and things like that. And John sort of knew where, where my head was at. And, and so, uh, you know, when I got let go in 2003 in March, I was in the police academy here in Delaware in, uh, in September. So, you know, when, so I never really got, I never really got burnt out on music and I never, but I never lost my love for music either. You know, it's just, I felt like I had to do something differently at that, at that point. Um, and then, uh, a couple of years after I was, uh, you know, on the job and, and working, I was contacted by Michael K. Meyer from Paramaze and said, Hey, you know, I know that, you know, I know that you are doing police work full time and all this other stuff, but I'd love to have you guest on, on our record. And, um, and I said, yes. And so that was a kind of my door doorway back into it. And then I was contacted shortly thereafter by John to come back and, you know, on a part-time basis, but do the record and, and all that for Ice Earth. So, you know, i I've done I think was I was just thinking about this. I, I think I've done so like six records since I've since I've been a police officer. You know what I mean? So my oh, yeah. I haven't really s- slowed down where that's concerned. You know, I mean I've been fairly up on doing stuff. Um so you know it 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 this way is just better for me. I mean, A, I'm making more money than I ever did when I was a musician. Um but I'm, I'm able to do music because I love it. I'm not reliant on, on doing it. And it's still, and I still feel that I'm, you know, I've always done music because I've loved it because I've never really made a lot of money off of it. Um, probably the most I've ever made off of music was when I went back with Ice Earth for those couple of years. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, it's just because that's the way it was at that point, you know, because the, mm-hmm. you know, the band was making, making more money, but uh you know, I've, I've always done music for the love of it. And, and I always will. I mean, it'd be great if I could make, make money doing it, but you know, I get it, man. It's, it's tough for everybody. So I'm just in a, in a good position right now where I can do it in the, in the, in the, in the fashion that I can. So, right. and I'm happy that people like still like listening to it. So. Yeah. Uh, James, you had something else to ask, didn't you? Well, uh, I had it was this was kind of a of a joke one that you kind of already answered that your your love of uh, Greece there. Uh, uh, this is coming Be from nice, my, James. Those are my people. Well, you know, actually, this is coming from your uh, from your Greek attache friend there, Eric Adams from my uh, uh, from Puerto my Rican show. lion. Yeah, the Puerto okay, Rican lion. Ahead. He had a question. Uh, uh, were uh, the Greeks more response uh, responsive to your music in Queens or in Athens after your uh, after working in Athens, Greece? <laughs> <laughs> Matt, the joke behind that is because there's a big population of Greek people from Astoria, Queens, New York, which is where I'm originally from. So yeah, so yeah, I, I, you know, I I wouldn't know. I mean, I'd definitely say, uh, you know, the first time I went to Greece, it it kind of freaked me out a little bit because it was like the like we were the freaking Beatles, you know. It was it was kind of scary, like driving up. Uh, I think I think the the first well, no, the first the first show we we played in. Uh, Thessaloniki and it was it was a mate that was amazing uh there was an amazing turnout and just tons and tons of fans but when we drove into uh into Athens for the first time and the and the people were like surrounding our bus and it was just it was mind-blowing I mean it was just took completely caught me off guard and we had been to Europe you know a couple times and and done stuff but no, no place ever has been like that so I mean they're just just total total fans and 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 still are just amazing <clears throat> amazing fans and you know like i said the, the guys on our that that own our label and work on our label they're 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 fans they're men they're metal fans and they're just you know just great great people man so my hat's off to the uh the uh the brothers and sisters in halas <laughs> he said it right a- i don't believe it that makes me so happy <laughs> lou is happy lou is happy James, you had a more serious question. Well, actually, oh, oh, the, the serious one. Now, um, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's it's less about that. Um, 
you know, um, I'm listening to a lot of your, your music. There's a, uh, it seems like there's a very strong, uh, Christian, uh, aspect in that. Do you feel like, uh, you know, exposing your faith and, and talking about your faith through music and stuff like that? Do you think that that hurts or, uh, helps your, your, fa- the fandom and everything? Cause you know, everyone gets the bad stigma of heavy metal being, you know, quote unquote satanic and everything. And, you know, there's a, there, there's a lot of music in there that, that you've been, you know, that your lyrics and everything have that are very heavily, uh, Christian. So, yeah. Uh, well, they're, they're not, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say that I'm like the huge, a huge religious person. Uh, I, I think I'm very spiritual, you know, I, and I, mm-hmm. but I, you know, I, I, I think I believe in equal representation. You know what I mean? I think that, that if there's, if you're going to say that there's, there's evil, then there's got to be good. And I think both, both sides should be equally represented <clears throat> and there's, there's no reason not to, you know, and that's, that kind of just comes back to that, that respect thing. You know, I mean, I think that everybody, everybody deserves respect, man. I have, I have Christian, Christian friends and I have uh, Satanist friends, you know, and I actually have a, uh, you know, Christian friends and Satanist friends who get together and talk and drink mead together. So, you know, I, I think that, that, that it's, the, it's the little things, man. When, if we all can sit down and, and talk and have like real conversations as human beings, that that's where, that's where it's at, man. And that, and so <clears throat> with that, I, I'm, you know, I'm not, like I said, I'm not, I'm not a big Christian guy, man. I'm, I'm just not, I don't, I don't go to church. Um, I've been to church, but I certainly believe and respect everybody's religion so long as it's not hurting other people you know what i mean it, whatever whatever gets you through the day man whatever whatever makes makes you feel good whatever makes you a better human being i'm 110 percent behind that whether it's you know satanism or, or christianity i don't really i don't really care you know because to me it comes down to the person if you're a good person then you know that's that's really that's really what matters and and uh and i think equal representation is always great because i'll listen to i'll listen to striper and then I'll go listen to Slayer or, you know what I mean? It, it doesn't really matter. I love both of them. So it, it just for, for different reasons and it doesn't really matter. The main thing is, is the music um, always is, is the, is the most important thing and being open-minded. So that's it. Awesome. Cool. And even though we sideways, I know Greg, you have some stuff to ask. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes. Um, first question I'll ask is actually from a good friend of mine, Joe Ribos. And uh, you are his favorite vocalist of all time, Matt, and uh, loves everything you've done from Iced Earth up to now. And his question is, because he absolutely loves your voice, thinks you're uh, impeccable that way. Um, has your, what was your vocal training you did kind of back in the Iced Earth days? And then has it changed any now? Uh. W- I think that, you know, I did some, I did some training with my, my, um, my sister-in-law was a, a, a trained vocal instructor and, and, and she was more operatic stuff. So I did some, some stuff early on with, with her. Uh, but there was a guy that, uh, that I had, um, was a student, um, with in, uh, in Tampa, his name was, uh, Al Cohen. He was recommended mm-hmm. by uh, the guys at Morrisound and stuff. I think he taught me a lot as far as, you know, understanding, you know, every voice is unique and you just really have to accept what's unique about your voice and kind of run with it. And I sort of have always kind of stuck that, you know, that's always in the back of my head. Not everybody can do everything. That's just the bottom, the bottom line. You know, you can't, not everybody can be a Mariah Carey or whatever, you know, whatever. Every, everybody's voice is unique. Um, And so, to really accentuate what is unique, you know, the best parts of your voice. And that's what I've always tried to do. Um, obviously, you know, training generally vocal training is a great thing, but you know, you're, you're going to know what your limitations are and you know what you, you know, you, everybody can do scales and all that and do runs and all that stuff all day long and, and, you know, work yourself up and you, you can expand your, <clears throat> your range and stuff. That's great. But you're still not going to just because you're expanding your, your range doesn't mean that you're going to be do, be able to do like, um, you know, super high raspy head stuff unless you're actually doing that. And unless you can do it, unless you can do it in a way that's safe for your voice. I've had some discussions from on uh, podcasts from vocal uh, vocal instructors and things like that, too. And, and they ask me kind of the same questions. And, you know, the, at the end of the day 
you know, is it, for me, it's, it's as long as I'm not hurting myself, as long as I'm not, you know, in causing physical pain or, or at the, at the end of a session, I'm not like, so absolutely destroyed, then I think I'm okay. You know, I think I'm doing all right with my voice. Um, obviously age changes things a lot as far as, um, uh, how, you know, recovery time and things like that. Um, when, you know, when I'm on the road, if, you know, if I'm, if I'm torn or whatever, I usually do like a little, you know, ibuprofen cocktail thing where, you know, and taking lots of vitamins and drink lots of water and stuff like that to kind of keep swelling down and stuff like that. Cause you're going to have that. Your voice is just like, you know, any other muscle, if you're working it out, like really, really hard, you're going to get those, you know, you know, just kind of that straining in your neck and things like that in the muscles in your, in your neck. Um, and you're going to have, you know, inflammation on your cords that you don't even realize are there, but because you're, you're working it, it is what it is. So I think it's just definitely get, you know, training. I would recommend that for anybody that's, that's starting out just, just generally just to get the idea of like what your voice is and what you're doing with your voice. You're going through, you know, different, different parts of your voice, how to support yourself, how to support yourself from your, from your diaphragm, you know, pushing up things like that. I mean, that's, you, that's, that's the main thing. Your core is, is, is a huge part of it. And like being, a you know, projecting yourself powerfully and things like that. Um, but everybody's, everybody's different, man. It's, it's just kind of one of those things. There's no mathematical equation to it. Really. I think you just have to <clears throat> kind of find your own way with stuff. And that's sort of what I've tried to do. So hopefully people will like what I do and Hopefully I can keep doing it for a while. I'm 50, going to be 52 uh, this year. And uh, we'll see how long I can keep going. Oh, very cool. Excellent. Anything, Thank you. anything else, Greg? Um, well, not really questions, but just to compliment on the uh, album, really, because, um, well, first of all, don't feel bad about the digital thing because I can't even figure out how to get my picture the right way here. So <laughs> <laughs> you're not alone on that one, but um, really connected with a lot of what you said. Cause I feel uh, the same way with a lot of the newer music where I, I like the scene. I respect a lot of the bands that are going on, but I don't necessarily listen to a lot of it. Um, uh, frequently. Yeah. Um, but I loved the vibe to this album and I love how everything flows together. And I think you really, really captured that evolution and just the spirit of everything. Kind of, you know, how, um, <clears throat> the metal was back in the day with the first U S power metal scene where you had like metal church and queen Shrike. and the other, the first four songs on this album is, uh, the new ashes air is, is, the best four song opener I have heard in a long time. I absolutely love it. This album just totally rips super thrashy. And um, I wasn't a, well, I'm still not a big power metal fan, which is why it really excited me. This was thrash, but Joe, as I asked him if he had any questions today, gave me a couple of iced earth recommendations. And I went and listened to horror show and alive in Athens. Great performances, man. Uh, Dracula is amazing. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, that was that's a that's a tough one, man. That's a, <laughs> that's a, it's always a tough one live to do. So I yeah. I can uh, I can hear why, but yeah, that was just amazing. Like I said, totally blew me away. Now I've got to go back and get the rest of your stuff in a uh, iced earth. But <laughs> yeah, well, um, like I said, I wish Century Media had uh, had invested in doing that. You know, doing video for that for that horror show tour, man. Cause it was, it was intense and it was, we were doing all those songs. We did the entire, we did the entire horror show record, man. So, um, on the, on the, the, on the third hour of, uh, you know, of doing it. So, um, wow. but it, yeah, so it was, it was, it was intense, man. But yeah, we had, you know, I had two hours to warm up to Dracula. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> true, true. Nice, nice and loose by then or warmed up anyway <laughs> i'm glad i got to see it in new york i mean the opening acts were jack panzer and in flames yeah and um that was such a great show and it was packed i had never seen i think the only other time i've seen wwe the world that packed was when uh motorhead played a month later yeah so uh, and and you know lemmy uh, well rest in peace lemmy everywhere he went everyone followed so, oh, yeah. you know, for ISER to 
have uh, commanded that much of a presence at uh, at a show of theirs in New York. I mean, that just shows you that the horror show was, I don't know, to me, that was one of the best albums of 2001. Um, so I, I do have a, a funny story to lead into my next question. And it's a personal question, meaning it's a personal preference. But last time I was in Greece, I actually, I, I, I had a nice earth shirt on and my wife and I, we were we were on holiday because my cousin was getting married on the island of Hios. I had a nice earth shirt on. We were at the Acropolis. I must have been bombarded by everybody <laughs> there asking me when I get that shirt because I it was uh, from it, it was it was purchased in the states, so the quality was like really high. So here I'm getting. I'm like I I don't know the guys in nice earth. I, I'm just wear, I'm just a fan wearing the shirt. But uh, it, it was cool to see that uh, people there had such love for your music. My question is, when you were on tour there, what was your favorite delicacy to eat? Oh, man. Uh, well. Shut up, James. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't, it's, it's one of the things. The, the, the Euros were always freaking amazing. But just, I mean, hell, man, just the salads. And I, you know, I try to explain to my, to my wife because my i want to take my wife to greece uh we we haven't been but you know it's like one of those things you know it's money it costs money to do everything but uh you know i'm like even the salads are like so much just like so fresh and they've got like the the, the fresh feta cheese on top and just like just amazing so i i don't know man that just always seems to me like like the the freshness of the food was just always a a, a big thing for me at least everywhere that i that i ate but even the even the the like the roadside the euro joints man were amazing uh, especially when you're you know you're shaving down that that lamb like it's like actually it's not like the euro meat that you get over here where it's like kind of that compressed meat right. it's actually the lamb that they're stacked and they're roasting spinning on that thing so they're shaving it off and it's just straight up lamb coming off on, onto your euro and phew, wow. that's that's just amazing yeah the fresh <laughs> maybe that's maybe that's the, that's it because i always talk about that too the freaking lamb is amazing Wow. now i'm hungry again oh. i know getting dry was right after this uh manny do you have anything <laughs> yeah i just wanted to ask you like when you uh when you write a song or music are you thinking about a project in mind or do you guys um uh, as a songwriter do you kind of gather these songs and see where they fit in the upcoming project you may be doing album or otherwise uh well yeah i mean i i i mean as a as a like when i'm writing lyrics i i usually write lyrics like a like it's a poem so it's just the thought you know what i mean right. so i don't i don't really have any preconceived notion for the for it as far as music unless i do you know unless i go unless it's like this a melody you know you know how you kind of get a melody in your head it's like kind of sticks there and you go hmm, this is kind of be cool and then i start writing out lyrics and if if that's the case then then i usually just hold that for a song and then i'll i'm like maybe like for gone i had that as a song as a as a more of a of a ballad song and didn't know was whether we were going to use it on this record or not <clears throat> but we did because i gave it to freddie and i said hey freddie eyes this and he did so you know <laughs> so it went from a, a strict ballad to you know a more of a, a metal kind of a kind of a vibe uh to it so um but like when freddie gives me stuff um, I might, if I've got a lyrical idea that I had and I, and I think that it fits what this, you know, what the music is, is telling me, then I'll maybe grab that and put it over there. Or if I get some, just a vibe off of, sometimes I'll just be listening to like stuff that Freddie gives me and I'll just vibe on whatever chorus is there or whatever, you know, kind of melody he's got and just kind of start rolling and just start just writing. And so it, it really, there's no method to, to the madness, man. It just, it happens sometimes just, just different ways okay well thank you for answering the question i'm from tampa too uh florida nice. actually i'm in tampa right now i don't really power metal was never my thing but i did i did like ice earth and horror the horror album which i was the one that i bought it unheard because i just was fascinated that you guys would write a whole album about universal horror monsters so i thought that was really right Cool. And what I liked about it is I start seeing more down to earth than say Mad of War, any of those kind of bands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, because, man, you know, when I, I think really of power right. metal, that's what I thought of. So that's, yeah. So usually that, you know, I, I kind of stayed away. But anyway, um, what would you say is the difference, biggest difference between Ice Earth and what you're doing now as a project, musically or lyrically, in, in your view? 
Uh, well, I guess, I guess the, the, you know, the, the main thing is, is that it's, just, it's me and Freddie doing it. Um, and, and so, you know, it's not, it's not, you know, obviously John doesn't have anything to do with it, so it's not going to be iced earth. Um, right. so, you know, and a lot of people equate my voice with, with iced earth because that's what, you know, they listen to those songs with my voice on it. And so they hear my voice and they, they equate it that way, which I, I understand, you know, I get that. Um, but I, I've always just tried to be myself the best I, I could be, you know, obviously if I'm given direction, like on a song to do things this way or that way, but you know, there was never really any strong, even from, from John, there was never any really strong, like, Hey, you can't do that. You know, you know, I was, you trusted with my, with my instincts where that's concerned or, or, you know, I worked it out with, with Jim and I, you know, Jim Morris and I worked on stuff together sometimes and, you know, we would do that. Um, but, you know, it's just, it's just me, man. When, with, with Freddie and I, it's just, it's just he and I, and we're just kicking ideas back and forth and just trying to make the best music we, we can. I mean, Freddie's a, a, you know, he's an accomplished musician, man. He's, he can freaking do everything. He can play bass, guitar, you know, drums, you know, he can, he can do a lot of shit. And, uh, and so I rely on him <clears throat> as far as that's concerned. And he relies on me as far as my insights and, uh, how to put together songs and, you know, write lyrics and write melodies and things like that. So, um, it's just really a, a team effort. And, uh, we, I think we work well together. I, I think that's my personal opinion. And, and I think we keep getting, getting stronger and stronger as we go. Thank you for answering my question. Sure. I'd, I'd say you work very well together. Three albums in, I mean, you know, I think you're doing all right. <laughs> Agreed. I, There's a I, couple of comments in, know. Oh, sorry, Greg, go ahead. I was going to say, I also agree that this is the strongest, at least for me. I mean, I, I can't stress how much I love this record. I wasn't uh, sure what I was going to think initially going in, but I, it, it blew me away, Matt. I mean, um, the, the he, he does uh, not the, say that often because he is a very grouchy man. He's a very <laughs> well, coming man, from him. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, I I have no comment, but I love Greg. He's awesome. <laughs> but, uh, no, just the way it flows together and the songs build off of each other. And then I'm a fan of classic literature, too. So I think um, both ly lyrically, vocally and, um, you know, musically, especially with the thrashiness to it, it plays on a lot of the emotions from that story and the way it flows along with the highs and the lows. And even the last song, Monsters Lament, is like the perfect epilogue. It's just well done. I love the record. Well, I appreciate it. Really, we're, you know, we are proud of it. Hey, I'm going to take a minute and, and point out to, to folks that, you know, are maybe thinking about not getting a, a physical copy um, of the record. You know, if they're hopefully there are people that are listening to this that are in, intend to buy the record. Um, but man, if if you're if you're thinking about buying the physical copy, please do, because Camille did some amazing artwork again. Uh, for this record, like for the entire the entire liner, all the lyrics are represented with a, with a piece of art, um, and uh, so just like on the last record, you know, he did he did artwork for for each song, and so it's just beautiful, man. The 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 layout is is you know immaculate. He did the the cover art obviously, and and then also all the art for for all the songs and in, inside this. So it's just a nice extra added thing. So when you're listening to the to the record and you you're you know opening up the book and you can see the lyrics and you can see the, the artwork that goes with it. So please buy a physical copy. Um, I, I implore you. And, you know, even, even if it's not <clears throat> the vinyl, which I know a lot of people are, you know, are fans of vinyl and I am as well, yeah. but even if it's just the CD, CD quality is so much better than MP3. I mean, the sound quality is just yeah. so much better. Definitely. Do, do you collect CDs? I'm not collecting them, but do you, do you still buy CDs or your records or, or do you do? Yeah. Something? Well, I, I do. I do have records, uh, mm -hmm. but I buy these, all, you know, all the time. Um, I even buy stuff that I, I had before that I don't, you know, sometimes if I'm walking by the, you know, the five dollar bin at Walmart and I go, Holy, <laughs> have that. I'm just going to get it, you know, yeah. so hopefully they get the artist gets paid again. And I know it's five bucks or whatever. I'm a cheap bastard. But uh, but, uh, you know, it's it is it is what it is. You know, I mean, if, if I can hell, if I can buy a physical copy of something and we've got stuff. Um, I know my wife and I, we still love CDs. We still have CD players in our vehicles because, you know, I know you. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of cars don't, but yeah, uh, all you, the new ones, yeah. you know, 
I just think it's important, man. I think uh, I, I, it just sound it just sounds so much better. It, you know, if you're listening to it through a good system or through headphones, you know, it just see, the CD sound is so much better. Uh, uh, a, even though I'm not going to say it's it sounds better, records sound a lot warmer, and there's mm-hmm. there's just nuance to them. So they sound freaking phenomenal. Obviously through headphones, good set of headphones. But uh, yeah, if you're really if you're really listening, you, you can tell the difference and, uh, oh, yeah. It's, yeah. and, and you can, you can miss stuff. MP3s that sound, sometimes the sound is so freaking compressed, man. I think you miss a lot, especially in the stuff that Freddie and I did with, uh, you know, production wise in this, we kept it pretty raw, but there's still a lot of nuance and, uh, you know, I've got a lot of different vocal harmonies and things like that going on. And if it's just too MP3, then you might oh, miss it. Yeah, definitely. There's a couple of people in the chat room that uh, put out some really cool comments. I just want to read them out. Um, Harold Burton said in regards to your law enforcement career, my hat's off to you, sir. Thank you for your service. And uh, Gingolo, I think that's how it's pronounced, yeah. says uh, greetings from Virginia, guys. And thank you for all the work you've done for the metal scene. Matt been a big fan since I was in sixth grade back in 2014 when I found burn offerings. So, Man. oh, and uh, Richie say says, Alive in Athens was amazing. Neither the Storm Rider is a gem. Sorry, I'm sure it's been said today. <laughs> well, we haven't said it yet, but we just, uh, you know, uh, called you out. So, um, you know, a couple of the comments I wanted to read to you, Matt. Uh, a lot of people are excited that uh, you're on air with us. Thank you. Thanks, man. Yeah, it's real cool. And since you have the Batman cup there, what is your favorite Batman? Who, who is oh, my favorite? Who, who what, is you it? mean actor? No, I'm, well, no, no. Are you talking about? Yeah, you're talking. I mean, that was a Batman question. 66. There. Or, you know, <laughs> all the other ones. Oh, oh. oh the, so, he's, yeah. so he's talking live action Batman. Okay. They, they yeah. find it interesting to know, but my, because I'm a vocal guy, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Kevin Conroy, man, is freaking amazing. Yes. He, he, oh. B- Batman animated series. Absolutely. His, mm-hmm. his voice, I mean, to me, his voice is Batman. So all that, right. Cool. That's kind of where it, it, it always sort of disturbed me. And I, and believe me, man, I love, I love the, the Bale Batman, but, but when he, when he was trying too hard to be sound like, you know, that, that's right. just, you don't have to, you don't have to do that. You just be Kevin Conroy, man. Just go, I'm bad. You know, just do that. Cool. Cool. That's it. You just gotta be cool. Yeah. And Batman was phenomenal. I mean, a lot of these guys were, I mean, Clooney, you can't even talk about Clooney, but a lot of <laughs> that were, and we're we're did a really nice job we don't talk about Clooney. that's a bad word that's a bad <laughs> bad word am i the only one who actually it's just enjoyed those ones for being really i think cute. you are james <laughs> i really <laughs> am Island upon the yourself, only one, sir. i am the only one who actually enjoys these just the absolute campiness of those but i also really enjoyed 66 batman so well i did too but i was six years old then so you know yeah, Not, uh, I mean, when I first I, saw them, I was eight. So yeah, but my dad, my dad was like, "Oh, show me the," you know, he showed me these, and I was like, "These are silly, but I like it." Yeah, yeah, no, they were because, of course, I was watching them in, in reruns uh, yeah. when I when I was growing up in the seventies. But um, but yeah, I mean, I I love, I mean, I I've always loved Batman. Even back then, I didn't think it was campy, but I also didn't think Super Friends was campy. Right. I watched the, the Super Friends if somebody was waterboarding me, you know, making me do it. <laughs> um, so it just, uh, yeah, just very, very, very bizarre stuff. But I think, I think what those, all, what all those things inspired, I think was, I think they really, really inspired um, guys like Bruce Tim and, you know, who did the it, at Batman animated series and, and even Tim Burton and things like that to, to get away from that campiness. Which, so I think that that, because that just, utter campiness they were like no no we can't do that we gotta we gotta move on you know we gotta we gotta do some uh you know we gotta bring some miller into it you know do some yeah do some good dark stuff and uh you know really do that with that character because it he he really needs that he deserves it definitely it's pretty amazing how the dark knight returns the graphic novel itself pretty much influenced the direction batman would go from 89 on sans batman forever and batman and robin james <laughs> yeah sans <laughs> Hey, I will say, though, <clears throat> Clooney, the dirty word aside, that movie is worth watching at least once for Arnold and his horrible ice puns. Oh, those are the best ice puns ever. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you you get get, get good and drunk. Have one good Saturday night. But other than that, yeah, you can pretty much forget that. 
I mean, I, maybe, maybe that's what I always remember it for was all the terrible ice puns and 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 the overacting for Uma Thurman. But yeah, and the terrible acting and the terrible script and the terrible acting. Yeah, well, yeah. Outside <laughs> of that, you know, it was great. Actually, uh, I enjoyed uh, the uh, I always forget the voice actor's name, but uh, I enjoyed him in Batman Beyond, also playing uh, you know older Bruce Wayne. So I think it's the same actor, isn't it? It was, it was the same actor. Yeah, it is. It was uh, Terry McGinnis was, was voiced by Will Friedel. Why are we talking about Batman? I, know, well, I, got, like I got one more Batman thing. <laughs> hey, you know what? It's it's something we focus on and we just key right on it. Yeah, well, I keep bringing up the bug. But uh, me and Lou did a, a podcast about the Joker. Now, which is your favorite Joker? And this uh, the we're talking about the five cinematic Jokers. So it could be yeah, Romero, yeah. Nicholson, um, Ledger, um, Phoenix or uh, Leto. Um. Well, and, and it's weird though, man. It's it's really hard. I think I think uh, I think Joaquin did a freaking phenomenal job, but that that Joker is not even really in the same. I don't even know that that Joker is even in the same real Batman universe. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. It was Taxi Driver with clowns. Yeah. Phenomenal. Kind of, <laughs> essentially, it was also. It was so freaking tragic. I mean, it was it was a great movie, but it was really really tragic. It's hard, hard to hard to watch, um, even to yeah. to. Um, but you know, I I always like I always like Jack Nicholson's delivery, man. I, I really you know I'm just an 89, 89 guy. I could I could watch Batman eighty nine. You know, just I it's got it's that it's like the magic, man. It's got it's got Keaton, it's got Nicholson, it's got Tim Burton directing. I mean, it's just you you can't really go wrong with that. And I and I love the the fact that every it's sort of like coming back around it's like the renaissance now people are going hey man you know batman 89 was pretty freaking red you know so yeah, yeah. Uh, and and so they're i guess they're gonna pay some homage to it on the flash movie coming up and you know yeah. keaton's coming back so that would that'll be cool i'm i'm really hoping that they i know that they're they're, they're bringing keaton back also for the the batgirl um, thing on hbo max but i was really really hoping that they were going to use him for uh, a batman beyond Mm, absolutely you know, i hope so too and no, it's no. got an awesome prince soundtrack <clears throat> i don't care what you say wayne <laughs> well yes, that one. Uh, prince is awesome. i will give prince awesome but i don't know about the sound uh, yeah. <laughs> all right well <laughs> electric chair was a good song <laughs> yeah. yeah the future is pretty good too yeah the the elfman soundtrack was phenomenal though. oh yeah yeah, yeah. that's pure danny elfman yeah 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 all right. Well, again, thank you very much, Matt, for coming on the show. And uh, the new album, Ash from Ashes of Aries, Emperors and Fools, is coming out January 21st. Uh, where can people go to uh, see? You got to, you guys have a website? Uh, yep. Yep. Uh, AshesofAries.com. And uh, we got a we got a web store. We got stuff up there. Uh, you know, maybe we'll try to do some. We, we do have some inventory on some some uh, some shirts that we may be trying to trying to get rid of here. If uh, maybe the, so there'll maybe it'd be a big sale or something and mm -hmm. a little extra something put in with the stuff so keep an eye out for that okay. um and hopefully we'll have some some newer stuff coming up uh if we can get some the the problem is again you know like i said all of our money goes to the record so you know right. goes to paying guest musicians paying for record to be mixed and mastered and all that other good stuff and paying our artists and and all that stuff so uh we don't have a, little, a lot of extra money laying around for merch um, so if we, if we can, if we can scrape together some stuff to do some new, new, new line of merch, we'll certainly do that. But in the meantime, we do have other stuff that's, uh, that's hanging out up there. So if people dug the last record, we do have, uh, you know, those shirts up there. Um, we, I think we're still selling some CDs and stuff like that as well. So, uh, yeah, check that out. Any help you can give us, we greatly appreciate it. Really awesome. All right, we'll try to put links in the description. Definitely. All right. Definitely. We'll do that. And again, thank you very thank, much. Thank you guys. Yeah. You have a great Thanks one for coming on. Cheers, Matt. Have, have a great night. Thank you. All right. Have and that's for the killer record. Yes. yes. And it's <laughs> actually, it's, since even though it's so early in the year, it's it's going to be up there with one of my albums of the year already. Same here. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I'm okay. sorry. I probably can't give it to you over Voivod because Voivod's like my spirit band, but <laughs> well, good, brother. definitely will tie with it. <laughs> we, we've all got them, man. And I, hey, man, if I, if I can get in there somewhere, you know, get a little, get a little. You know, headphone time in there somewhere. I'm all, I'm all happy, man. Appreciate it. Definitely. Yep, will. I pre-ordered it today. Right. <laughs> all, right. all right. Stay safe and stay healthy, Matt. Thank you. All right. Appreciate Thank it. You. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Real cool.
yeah, that was awesome. Real yeah. personal guy. Yeah, Very thank cool. you. He's still Take on your... the line. <laughs> yeah, he's still on the line there, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> the check's in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. Anything else you guys want to talk about before we leave? Yes. What's that? Sadly, Burke Shelley, founder, bass player, and singer, and main songwriter for Budgie, just passed away on the tenth. Yeah, that's right. Yep. So, and uh, Lou Manny and I, since uh, well, one Wayne is dead to me now. Two, he's not a big <laughs> Budgie fan. So the three of us are going to do a uh, tribute. I believe next week. Wayne, uh, you're not into Budgie at all. I mean, from Metallica no. or no? no I like the Metallica versions better, but uh, I don't really oh, never I'll listen to them. While you sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really gave su- a shot. I'm surprised so I'm I didn't get no hate for saying they sound they tuned their their instruments and recorded like Dead Kennedys and then decided let's play Zeppelin instead. Well, um, I didn't. I didn't I, agree I, with your assessment. I thought it was interesting, but. <laughs> I hate Jello's voice. I've never listened to that much of the Dead Kennedys to where I could agree or disagree with that. So I was. I, don't, like, I, I, didn't, hmm. I didn't mean singing style. I just meant like how they tune the instruments and how it recorded. It no, no, that, that, eerily really that, like Dead Kennedys. Hmm. Well, that, the, the interesting thing about that is uh, a few of those early albums were produced by Roger Bain. Bain, and yeah. They were actually real heavily influenced by what uh, Sabbath and Zeppelin were doing. Yeah. So, almost a DIY situation. I mean, I just I, I'd never heard of them. I started listening to them after you brought it up, and and I was just listening. And I was like, oh, okay, I see. I no. I, I, I I see this. Oh. Well, I you know, they, know those budgie they albums were, were released in the states. I didn't hear about them till Metallica. Um, yeah, they they were released in the states. Um, were they keeping a keeping a rendezvous from a uh, night flight in eighty one? I think was actually on the charts over here too. Even okay, well, yeah. I, I I mean like th- like this one here, their second album, Squawk. And yeah, which is album, a great album. They can you hold it the other way so they, we can see it the way? Uh-huh. Yeah, can, can you hold it sideways so we can actually <laughs> there we go? Yeah. 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 This is my favorite cover they do. I love the uh, bird turned into a jet. But um, the first two, the self-titled and then Squawk, I don't think actually got an American press until right. Never Turn Your Back on a Friend came out and Bread Fan was on the charts. Okay. I, I, I used to... I mean, back then, especially, I would read all sorts of rock magazines. I never heard of Budgie. But then I never heard of the Misfits until Metallica covered them either. I heard of Danzig before I heard of Misfits. So, See, my dad was super into, like, a lot of 70s hard rock yeah. and prog and the new wave of British heavy metal stuff. So I heard this all long before I heard Metallica. Yeah, he, okay. So you he, are he had, familiar. Yeah. Yeah, so wait, are you not a... Couple... a... Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. No, he had a couple Budgie albums, and I i mean, I got into them when I was super young. I could have only been about um, 10 or so, and totally surface reason, but I was looking through his records one day, and I see Burke Shelley, and I'm like, dude, this guy has a pair of big honking glasses just like I do, and he's a rock star. <laughs> this is fucking awesome. I'm putting this on right now. Unfortunately, they were great. No, it's just cool. the unfortunate thing about what got him in the end was the fact that he didn't get a possibly life-saving surgery that would have left him incapacitated. He said he'd rather live out his days as is happily with his family. And, uh, you know, you it's know what, I, admirable I'm... and sad at the same time, you know, like. Um, it's sad, but very noble choice, I thought. Yeah, I have to. You know, it's quality versus quantity, you know, and and uh, I'm going to res- I respect him for his choice, actually. Wayne, are you are were you just not into older heavy metal hard rock bands or just no, I just wasn't your I thing? just never thought to give them a, a shot. I don't know. Maybe I will now. I, you know, I never really nobody really ever talked about them that much. So I really kind of just forgot about them. You know, I mean, let's face it. Unfortunately, the only time the name Budgie ever really comes into the conversation for a lot of people is when they say, oh, yeah, Metallica covered bread fan and right, uh, right. crash course in brain surgery. Yeah. Well, Wayne, we're not normal music fans. So let's let's just get we're that not normal. Right. No. We're no. not normal. We're not normal. Period there, Banny. I mean, uh, this is these are the, this is the crowd that you keep. 
<laughs> I mean, you know, we talk about metal the way uh, some people say, you know, you should join the please, please, please get a life foundation. And we don't care because we're having yeah. fun anyways. Oh, but uh, yeah, but I mean, we the fact that we me and three of us listen to, or two of us listen to Budgie and look for them or what have you and look at your collection behind you, Wayne. Yeah, we're not. not one budgie. Yeah. We, <laughs> no. Well, you, you need a, that bird in there somewhere. <laughs> budge for <laughs> Budgie, Wayne. Budge for Budgie. Yeah. Right. I'll at least put them on my Amazon so this way I know to listen to it. If I do like it, I'll buy it as I usually do. You so. have to, Wayne. They're the biggest thing since powdered milk. Trust me, it's true. <laughs> They're the biggest thing Wayne, prior to like, sliced I bread. I actually saw powdered milk in the, in the, in the supermarket today. I was like, what the... Uh, you never see this before? crap. People no. who have milk allergies. Gosh, yeah. What the heck, yeah. Lou? Well, you know, I, think you'll, I think you'll dig them. If you like uh, Black Sabbath and uh, you're you like powdered milk. <laughs> well, if you like yeah. powdered milk, powdered there's no milk milk right now. Jeez. You, but, <laughs> they uh, have get a healthy song called one You're the Biggest Weird Again, right? Powdered Milk. Do they really? Yes. <laughs> That's why Manny and Lou laughed, and the two of you were like, what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which, Greg, which... Don't, don't you think they're a little like Blue Oyster Cult? Not musically, but lyrically. They're very, very, have a very dark sense definitely. Of humor. Yeah. Very, very dark and very esoteric because yeah, even the things that kind of deal with normal, everyday type jokes like that, it's just odd. It's out there. Like, like, Park stage banner, for example, on that uh, live in Los Angeles in 78, I have when he comes out to the new album was impeccable at the time. And he first comes out and he says, yeah, the new record, unbleachable and kind of chuckles to himself. No one else laughs. I thought it was funny, but <laughs> if, if, what is it, the it's album? that Blue Oyster Cult type odd. What is the album, the album that I should never no, turn no. your back on? Yeah. Um, well, no. For, for a first listen, what should I listen to? Never turn your back on a friend or in for the kill. Um, I would say in for the kill or squawk is my opinion. Uh, right. I mean, squawk's my favorite, but do you really think that be? Yeah, I guess it would. I mean, it's a little bit more mellow than some of the others, but Wayne would probably enjoy it. And they don't have the other one on here. They have squawk, but they don't have the other one. There's the best. They don't have never turn your back on a friend. No, wow. but they, they do have, have in Los uh, Angeles. They have Squawk and they have the remastered self titled. Actually, <laughs> listen to self titled first, Wayne. Try mm-hmm. that. Yeah, it's it's very heavy and it's produced by Roger Bain. And um, this, it's not the most accessible, but for our taste, it probably is, you know. Um, mm. And I love Amazon. They always like if there's bands that I guess have similar names or whatever, they're always oh, yeah, lumped yeah, in. You're with getting the a bunch of rap in that yeah. bad boy. Yeah, uh, you're getting yeah. a bunch of rap. Panty Soakers six, Panty Soakers <laughs> five, and Panty Soakers three. So yeah, you go to you go to their popular <laughs> songs. It's it's three budgie songs, and then it's yeah, the alchemist. Yeah, it's it's all budgie. panty soakers. <laughs> yeah, that's party, <laughs> self fascio, <laughs> ballad of a <laughs> dope head, <laughs> left, right, black hoodie depend uh, on you. I don't think Buzz, you've been accused of being panty soakers too much in their career. But that's... I don't know, man. He had a I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. You, you, bring, you bring the picture of like a night there with a burb, you know, you might get some women. I don't know if you're going to get the women that you want, but you're going to get some women there. Well, that would be oh. the story of my life. But anyway, go ahead. we don't know what happens in Wales. Oh, God. But uh, okay. yeah. So rest in peace. Uh, what was the yeah. name again? I'm sorry. Oh, Burke wow. Shelley. Shelley. Burke. Yeah, sorry. In, the panty in soakers that distracted me. <laughs> Dead. Things, that, things that Wayne's never gotten. Penny soakers. Got it. Cool. <laughs> Actually, uh, two other. Uh, well, let's see. I'm not a big fan, but Ronnie Spector passed away today. You guys probably best know her for singing the, in the Eddie Money song, but Be My Baby. Yep. And the, the guy who promoted Woodstock, whose name escapes me, um he was a young guy when he just died uh i think sunday he was 77 so already the year is starting out really uh weirdly wonderful yeah 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 it was crazy yeah Yeah, betty white bob saget and now all this shit going down i think betty white was the worst one she too young way too young yeah Yeah, i know what what happened (laughs) (laughs) she was fucking yeah she was fucking jumping the fountains of caesar's palace okay that's what gets me about about the internet like people are shocked like oh my god she was so young what happened (laughs) (laughs) she stole the amulet from dick clark and then they came to release his vengeance on her 
She was she was the one who stole the Merv Griffin set so that Kramer could have it in Seinfeld. <laughs> <laughs> she had her whole life ahead of her, but uh, definitely. Uh, but yeah, uh, no. Uh, the the what the, the my favorite thing about Woodstock is hearing the uh, PSAs. The don't oh, take those the brown are the acid. greatest. Those, those are the, those are the best ones. My yeah. my stepfather who passed away the, the last year had the full vinyl Woodstock, and just hearing those PSAs, the uh, oh everybody don't take the brown acid. All right, far out. <laughs> just keep going. It's like yeah, <laughs> that, this acid could kill you. Don't take it. Cool. Well, all right. Now we're going to the next band. <laughs> Well, you know what's crazy is these bands would play like at three o'clock in the morning. They would just keep playing, like that Jimi Hendrix performance. That's like seven a.m. or eight yeah. thirty a.m. or something. Oh, oh, the Santana one is like freaking like like nine o'clock in the morning. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah, yeah. yeah I crazy. think the Hendrix concert actually started at seven a.m. when he did that set. Yeah, I think you're right, Manny. Yeah, yeah and there's yeah, darn near sunrise like, almost. People are leaving. You know, everyone talks about how great it was, but people are starting to leave. Well, you know, I mean, when it comes right down to it, hippies, they say a lot of cool stuff. They got a lot of good ideas, but all they really do is smoke pot and smell bad. So this is bad true. judgment. And I this is, and this is the reason why I'm Hendrix not going said. to fucking Bonnaroo. And my wife's going like, why don't we go to Bonnaroo? Because it's Pussifer and Tool. And it's like, I don't want to be in middle of middle Tennessee in the middle of summer with hippies. OK, yes, that's just gonna smell I know bad. you want food, but relax. Well, right, my, kind of... my days of going to festivals are over. I can't do it. I'm I'm 51. I'm an old guy. I can't do it anymore. So leave it to you, young guys. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Kind of, the youngest guy here is uh Greg. Don't right? be an ageist. Uh, Greg? Greg is the well, who is the youngest one? No, How old are you? Is I think James, James is 35. Young. I'm 39. Almost. Oh, so that's Greg. Yep. So I'm Actually, th- it's 38. I'll be turning 38 this year. Wait, Lou, how old are you? Aren't you the youngest? 41. Oh, you win. <laughs> what do I win? <laughs> but I'm you win. You, win. you can go out in the festival with stinking hippies is what you win. I'm out. Oh, yeah, no, I'm going go to I'm gonna go to Louisville, Kentucky, drink bourbon and watch Tool and freaking inside. inside nope, of, you're the new home. wavy gravy. We just decided. Whoa. whoa, <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Going to no, put no, you no. in a bowler hat and put you on a pig farm. Get is wavy gravy still alive? That's amazing. I thought he passed a couple years ago. Wavy gravy died. Maybe he is dead. I don't know. Yeah, when they did that last documentary about it on, uh, oh God, no, no, wavy gravy is still kicking around in in East Greenbush. Wow, he must have taken the green acid. He took took the green. I don't know, but I'm dead. I'm dead inside right now. Uh, We gotta get all right. (laughs) All right, guys, you have a good one. Thank you. But hold on, what uh, next week? We're going to I don't know if anybody's been seeing these, but I've been posting them on on all the social medias. I've been trying to anyway on Facebook and Twitter and uh, on TikTok as well. But uh, we want you guys, the fans, to be uh, more involved with the show and pick which albums or whatever we're going to talk about the next week. And this week we have James who picked two bands. Where are they, James? I actually did. It. I you, you actually took a suggestion. We're okay. actually gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go with uh, two albums that opened last year. Uh, both have female metal singers. Uh, mm-hmm. One uh, Canadian band known as Spirit Box came out with the band, uh, album Eternal Blue, and the other one is uh, Ginger uh, came out with a new album, of course, from Ukraine, uh, Wallflower. So, you mm-hmm. guys pick and uh, let us know. And I I have I'm partial to one. But and uh, Lou is partial to the other one, so mm. we'll see. We'll see who wins round yeah. round one. Ready, fight. Yeah, right now I just have it up on TikTok. I gotta get it on uh, Facebook and Twitter. But uh, so far, Ginger is in the lead. I'm not shocked. Much, I'm not. Ginger's more popular. Even yeah. I, I like Ginger. So I, they were neck and neck at one point, but uh, all of a sudden, last uh, few days. Well, I have what? to check Two out Spirit Walk. I don't know who they are. No, so hey, Spirit, Spirit Box. Be- I think I, I think Too Manny, you'll seat. enjoy it. They're uh, the, they they describe this. I listen. I found them on Liquid Metal on XM okay. when I was driving one day, and uh, they were talking about how what they're what they do is they, they make they make uh, sad songs for for people, and it's kind of it's an, it's, an, it's, an, it's, an, it's an interesting concept, and they they do some different stuff there that's not you know normal. But she can she can throw down just as much as Tatiana can. Well, I'm going to check it Dude, out. Who's that? Eternal Box or? 
Uh, I mean, box. spirit box. Yeah. Eternal, <laughs> Eternal, Eternal, Eternal Eternal box. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, thanks, right. thanks, Greg, for being so supportive of this. You know, I feel so warm inside. <laughs> well, I I couldn't remember. I never heard of them and before the other day. So I didn't either. I'm with him, so I, I have to either. check them out. Yeah, at, at least I got the right words in there, even if it was mixed. Yeah, you, you, know, you, you, you got close. Eternal right, box right sounds like a good singles <laughs> compilation <laughs> or a bad porno <laughs> film. Anyway. <laughs> Or a scary every porno time you say film. that at the risk of the, of the yeah. of Detroit Rock City, like this is how this is how horror movies are made. This is also how pornos are made. Porno this is how <laughs> porno movies start out, dude. Dude, <laughs> there was a movie called Chatterbox in the seventies, but we won't discuss that. Jeez. Yeah, oh, <laughs> you the seventies is what I'm gonna maybe watch tonight. Just David Bowie just got I'm, uh, Ziggy uh, Stardust film uh concert from 1973 so i'm gonna i've never seen it i'm gonna check it out oh, cool. yeah. speaking of david bowie i just got this today in the mail toy uh toy. I, I need to i need to toy. grab that That's i hate toy. that cover look at that cover it's so... yeah it's him it's a picture I of him know, when he's a baby and then he uses <laughs> His I know that uses his grown-up face. It's, God, that's frightening. Looks like ET. Is. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that is very unnerving. That's so, very Bowie. What's that this, makes Vinnie well, Vincent look normal. Yeah. No, it it's no, it still makes Vinnie Vincent look like abnormal. Rose. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, what it's, what's it's the story? Abby normal. What's the story behind that? I mean, he, <laughs> he recorded this like Wayne yeah, he recorded shelved it. Um, he wanted to have it like recorded and then instantly put out. Oh, and then okay. at that time, none of that kind of thing existed. Oh, gotcha. like it, it couldn't that couldn't happen. So it just got you know put away. Well, I got lucky. I got to see David Bowie twice. So that was really. Oh, really? Yeah. 87, cool. 90. Yeah. So good. Oh, oh did we good, say rest in peace, Bob Saget, by the way? No, we didn't. No. Right. Danny Bob Tanner made the 49ers win win this year for him. <laughs> he just threw that in there, James. I'm a 49ers fan. I will. De- uh, well, I know. I, I at all times. So I know every episode Wayne is going to talk about Halloween, yeah. and you're going to bring up the 49ers at some point. So, oh, or or just Bay Area sports or Tennessee sports, depending on how. Fair I enough. Feel. Fair enough. I should, I should just use that as my face from now on. Uh, please, you know, actually, please. I think that'd be much better. <laughs> That's pretty um, frightening. And uh, we're also going to attempt at the end of the month to bring no, back Adam Nick West. Wall onto a uh, right. Adam West. Let's put the Adam I've West got down. That. I've got that on my wall. Up Wayne, there. put put the toys down and slowly really? walk. Yeah, look, actually, Wayne, I'm going to turn this around. There's my my <laughs> nerd Lou, wall. Lou, Lou, nice it. try here. Oh, really? So <laughs> the, those are the other ones. These, these are the new ones. These are the McFarlane ones. I got the. Yeah, I've got too. that one, and I've got the Robin one, but that's the only ones I've got. Yeah, yeah. Robin looks like she looks like a girl. Anyway, Lou, what was that again you were saying? I was just trying to say that we're going <laughs> to... See, I also have uh, things up here. I can turn my computer around. Oh, sorry, Lou, go ahead. The yurtle, the turtle-looking motherfucker. See why Anyways, he's like... dead to me? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, don't, I, got I, don't, Halloween I don't know, I don't know if you should be like, <laughs> like cutting down trees or stomping on his head. Which one is it there, Lou? <laughs> what is that? Ruler. That's a uh, ruler. Mm. Obviously, someone never been to Catholic school. No, <laughs> go cut me a switch, you fucker. <laughs> switch. <laughs> Catholic school. I've never even been to church. So anyway, go ahead. As really? I was saying, oh, uh, no, Mick, I hardly better. Mick. Mick. <laughs> Wall. Mick Wall will yeah. attempt to come back on Rats Eye Review again at the end of the month. Cool. Oh, okay, cool. Speaking of which, uh, I finally got the Dio book and I bought his Jimi Hendrix book. So I haven't read this one yet. Very cool. Yeah, well, I'm going to ask him about it if I have a chance on this Hendrix one. But, you know, the the biggest problem is time difference because he's in the UK. So they're five hours ahead. So, you know, we'll try to figure that out soon. Hopefully. All right. Sounds good. So that's it for today's show. Again, thanks for Matt Barlow for joining us. It was really cool to have him on here. And uh, yes. please go buy his album. It's very, very good. We all recommend it. I really enjoy it a lot. So, well, thank I you do. for having was, me on a, once again, yeah. gentlemen. Yeah, it was man, a lot better you. than most of your suggestions there. Well, thanks, we actually man. had a winner this one. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Once in a while, <laughs> I find good ones. 
But uh, we will see you guys next week and uh, ratsoundreview.com. And please follow us on Twitter, Spotify, uh, iTunes, and uh, Facebook. And anything else? I don't know. Uh, where can we find you, Lou? Uh, I'm not even going to tell you to go to my website, but just go to my link tree, Music is Life podcast. That's a big link tree, by the way. I know. I'm trying to promote every platform that you can find Music is Life podcast and Rats Eye Review Network That's on. Crazy. And uh, a big shout out to the uh, shows that joined us this year. Just the Cheese Please yes, uh, with Tara J and Adam and also uh, Mark Allen Taylor and Jerry, the bullshit podcast, I guess they call it. Uh, yep. Mm-hmm. The BS so to them. sessions. Yes. Sorry, the bullsh- the say, that BS sessions. Times fast. say that 10 times fast. BS sessions, BS. No. Anyway, um, <laughs> but uh, I think those are it. Those are why we also got the great Harry Barnett and Evie yeah. with their Friday night. Uh, what the Friday, night Friday night I told, Friday I told him, see, I said it. I said it on my podcast, Beyond Bushido, that he was going to do the Terry Funk and retire for only a few weeks. And look what happens. Yeah, I know. I told him. Well, that was quicker than a Terry Funk retirement. He came back after one week. I know. I know. I was just, uh, it, it's, he was, he's even worse than Terry Funk about it. So he's like Eddie Guerrero. He lied. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what day <they> about though? <laughs> but, uh, and welcome aboard to uh, Tara J, Adam, uh, Mark, and Jerry. And uh, of course, Evie being um, on Harry's show. So, yay. Yeah. And Tara and Adam will be on this show. Hope maybe by the end of the month, I think. And I want to do a movie with them. And uh, I don't know if any of you guys watched it, but I suggested uh, Motorama. I never even heard of this film. I've never even heard where, of where this Where the hell do you find movie. these? Uh, where do you find these I, things? What the fuck did I, you I, I was not even an 80s this. film. <laughs> that was an, it's like 91 ish. But they but, do uh, 80s, 80 to 89. I know. I know. Yeah, but you know what? Critters. You have Come to be on. a rebel, don't you, Wayne? Uh, I do. I do. I, it's got to be just difficult. You just have to go. Like, you're just gotta trying be to drag a... the 80s out longer while everyone else is trying to put a fucking <laughs> nail in that coffin. Wayne, you're such a goddamn Karen. Anyways. Yeah. But uh, it's it's very Kevin. cheesy. It's very cheesy. It's got Drew Barrymore in it. So that got to be. Yeah, yeah, but so did Poison right? Ivy. You're going to recommend that next? I mean, come on. I don't know. Well, with the sound off, I would watch Drew Barrymore. But anyway, go ahead. But uh, I, I don't know. I, I found this movie. I was watching. I don't even know what channel it was, but I just was flipping through the TV and I saw this spice kid driving. Channel. No, it wasn't a spice channel. Okay. But this kid, this kid was driving around in it's a car. Like, At least he has some class here. OK, I'm like, why is this like, you know, child driving a car around? And I stuck watching the movie and actually kind of enjoyed it a little bit. So it, he it was, was trying to spell yeah, ass. But yeah, he doesn't he watch Emmett Lauder's Jug Bank link. Christmas, folks. <laughs> do, do not understand his thought process. All right. This is, movie's probably terrible. It is, and I, and I hope we can find it somewhere. I don't know where anybody can find it. Yeah, you see, it. he's, he's looking at this stuff instead of watching good quality. Jim I actually own the DVD. <laughs> I want to go around admitting that. I mean, at Why? least at least you DVD haven't watched it yet. Two. Somebody what? actually you haven't watched it yet on DVD. They actually yeah. produce a DVD. Oh, wow. You haven't watched it yet. How do you know I it's mean, bad? I mean, yeah, the, the, that's actually not Cause saying the much, name of the show is just the cut- cheese, please. How, how would we not assume it? Yeah, cheese, how, how are we not supposed to like, show that this is going to be freaking terrible and we're going to enjoy lampooning? Yeah, it's not called it. the Orson Welles Appreciation Movie Society. It's called <laughs> Cheese, Please. <laughs> this isn't inside the actor's studio with James Lipton, okay? This is <laughs> fucking <laughs> past the cheese, please. Get it right. It, it, it's Ma- not even Master the Douche studio. Theater with Wayne Noon. <laughs> 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 I mean, at least I'm going on their show to talk Toxic Avenger. That's a cheesy 80s movie. Well, I'm That's, sure this film yeah. was filmed in the uh, 80s. You, you know what actually would <laughs> it was be just a released in 91. They haven't done it yet. That would um, <clears throat> street trash. I love that movie. I yep. never saw it. Hey, it was the first movie that came to my mind, and it's going to be fun. Don't worry. And it's from the 90s. It's from the 90s. Okay. Congratulations. <laughs> they shot in yeah. the 80s. They were shot in the 80s. Oh, I'm sure. oh, they were shot in the 80s. So it's a technicality. We're, we're yeah, talking about yeah. slight topographical error. Wait, it. it couldn't get any distribution until the 90s because nobody would pick it up, is what he's saying. If Probably, I don't see yeah. one mullet in this film, Wayne, I'm going to be very upset. I'm sure there's plenty of mullets <laughs> in the film. There better be a full on Tennessee top hat or I riot. I want to see Jersey perm in it. Do you understand? <laughs> God, I want some soul glow in that motherfucker. <laughs> there uh, better be boy. fringe jackets. I'm, oh. I hope. I hope. We can only hope. There but, better be a there better be a Canadian tuxedo or five. We'll see what happens. I don't remember the movie that well. Of course you don't. <laughs> and yet you're recommending it. 
So yeah, yeah, he's talking about course. it. I at least listened to the freaking albums. Well, I, I was going to watch it a little while ago, like a couple then, weeks ago. Then, then, he has, then he found something else better to do, and then he no. decided to do something else. Got I it. was going to watch it with my son, but then I, there was like nudity in it, so I was like, I guess can't watch that. Dude. He's got to learn one day. Yeah, I mean, he's he was already he's already running around nude. So I mean, what's the worst that could happen? Yeah, it's true. Oh well, we'll find out when uh, Adam and Tara join us on Rat Sound Review. Until then. I bid you all a good day. Yay.